Hello, welcome to episode 21 of the Horn Notes video podcast. Um, this is John Erickson at the Arizona State University School of Music. And uh, our topic today is we're going to look at the brass gym for horn. And you're wondering well, why exactly look at it now. It's been out for a little while and actually the reason is it's been out 10 years. This is the 10th anniversary of the brass gym for horn, which I edited from the original version, which was uh, obviously for tuba euphonium. Um, that was released in 2005. So Sheridan and Palafian are best known actually really into this day for their original publication, which was The Breathing Gym. It's used quite a lot by like marching bands and all kinds of groups, all kinds of situations. Um, but in practice, what they did, particularly Sam, who's really, I think, kind of largely responsible for, for organizing this, um, what he did was he had group warm-up sessions with his students, and those sessions were basically a combination of playing and breathing exercises. So the breathing exercises came into print as the breathing gym, and the brass playing ones, the, the performance ones, came out as the brass gym. So, and then I had seen versions of it. I mean, I was on the faculty with them, and I knew kind of what he was doing, but, and I'd seen versions in the bass clef, but you see a version in bass clef, it's just like, you know, notes on a page if you're a horn player. Um, but then I saw at the AMEA thing in uh, 2007, most likely, um, I saw the euphonium treble clef version, which intrigued me because I could see how it actually would work on horn with, without too much translation. You'd want to start a little different, put things in a little different keys, so it's a little more centered on the horn's range. But overall, it's a really interesting product. And also, the the process of developing it was interesting to me too because I had earlier in my career I had a basically sort of etched in granite standard warm-up I did which was very very fixed and um, subsequently I had been teaching and I felt like I needed to to do some different things and it's good to vary your warm-up anyway too so it was really interesting to, to start working on their uh, things that they had developed but translating them onto horn so I worked with a group of students that spring and ultimately it was published. Um, I've got a preface in there as well. Um, there's basically, the book itself is divided, well it follows through, as I like to think of it, if you go from the beginning to about beautiful sounds, you need to do things in the order presented, and after that you can kind of jump around a little bit. But the uh, there's a group of things that the book works on. Um, now, a little spoiler alert, I'm not going to put a bunch of examples on this podcast because I would actually like you to go buy the book, because uh, you should. It's a good publication. It's been out for years. It's really not overpriced or anything. It's it's a great great thing to get. Um, it has several groups of, of exercises on it that you can use for several different things. I think one of the biggest values out of the book for a horn player is working on intonation, and next to that, a big value is the low range. Um, looking at intonation first, um, the book itself is set up to be played with a CD that is provided with the book. Um, now you can also like put those, you know, rip those onto a MP3 player, play them on headphones, you know, however you want to manage it. What's great about that though is that the number of the exercises you can gauge your intonation to them playing. Um, on the CD and particularly I like to do some of the exercises as rounds starting a bar later than the CD for example um, in particular I'm thinking of uh, one that's called smooth air movement and the other one that's called beautiful sounds those work great as a round with the CD so you would start like a, a bar later than the CD now the in terms of the low range, um, you know, the book itself, if you just take the euphonium book, it actually works on the low range quite a lot, but it's actually kind of a little low um, the way it's set up, I think. It's not really getting you centered. One of the things they want if you're playing it on tuba or euphonium is they're looking for balance, that you're balancing your routine going up to the top of your range and the bottom of your range. And I think we achieved that in the horn version, um, but there's some really nice low range exercises that I would particularly mention that they work you through the break. Um, I'm particularly thinking of one they call shawarma and another one called slamma legato. Uh, they really work across the break in a way that's like really you know, useful to the horn player. 
Now I've also touched on the, the topic of balance already, but I, I would highlight again something like say beautiful sounds. Um, because basically it's it's a it's a tonal exercise, but it starts in the middle of the horn and you go up and down from that middle note with the way the exercise works. And it it's it really is a good way to get, have your face go in the right direction as it's going along. Um, I would, another thing I would mention is that um, you'll see a lot of emphasis on single tonguing in it. There's no mention of double tonguing in the book at all. Um, the authors clearly believe in developing fast single tonguing, and I would like second that. I know that among my teachers, um, particularly I'm sure that, like say for example, Vern Reynolds really valued fast single tonguing, which was a, a skill I had worked out pretty well by the time I got to my master's degree, but you can, can't keep working on it hard enough, you know, you gotta, you can solve a lot of things with fast single tonguing, that double tonguing is, is not as easy to, uh, to manage. So at the recent uh, Southwest Horn Conference, which was held in Phoenix, Arizona this past January, just, just about a month ago, I led a group warm-up session uh, based on the brass gym. Uh, materials and that was a lot of fun. It's a good group of folks came and, and it's really nice to play it with the CD and a big group of folks. Um, one thing that's a uh, kind of good also in that context I can explain how I would do some of these exercises. One of the ones I think that could use some explanation is the one they call Brum and basically I like this a lot but it's a, it's a two-part exercise and it's split up in the book slightly so you've got Brum and you've got Brum in 16th notes. Brum itself, you're just like throwing yourself at the notes. It's an exercise that goes like like that fast through little partial scales. And then Brum in 16th notes, you slow it down, or not really slow it down, but you put it in time. So it's like something like that. And it ends up being a great combination exercise. Um, it, it, I think it usually kind of goes by people if they just look at the book. They sort of miss the value of that exercise, which I think is a particularly good one. Another uh, exercise I'll just men I like to mention to people is towards the back. There's a group of things they call lip flips, and you know people always want to work on. Well, they don't always want to work on them, but they need to work on trills. And there's a lot of different trill exercises out there, but I think you actually you have you're going to have better luck if you practice things that are cross-training the skill, not just practicing trill exercises. So, for example, lip flips uh, is a great one. It starts out like this. Bum, buddy, dum, bum, buddy, dum, bum, buddy, duddy, 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 dum. And you go along different ways. You've got ones that are like in steps. You've got wider intervals. Um, if you work out a good lip flip type of routine, it'll definitely help your trills. Um, with all that said, um, I, I still I do recommend this book uh, to my students and to anybody out there listening. Um, I think it's held up really well over time. Um, if nothing else, too, you should enjoy the, the pictures of Sam and Pat looking crazy and doing stuff within the book. But uh, with that aside, though, uh, it is a great publication. Um, Sam and Pat, both they're no longer at ASU, so I, I don't teach with them here. and. I rarely see them out in the, in the real world, but I do enjoy um, the publication and using it with students. And again, I would say it's definitely worth checking out. And with that, we'll close this episode of the Horn Notes video podcast. Um, we got some guests coming up in the next few weeks, so do be watching for uh, new episodes to come out soon on a variety of topics.